Welcome back to the End of Days Chronicles channel. The ongoing tragic events occurring in Kaaba are causing constant concern worldwide, not only among Muslims but also among people from all walks of life. These events, such as storms, floods, and now even snowfall in arid regions like the Arab country, are not merely viewed as natural phenomena but are seen as signs from God, suggesting that He is trying to convey a profound message to humanity. The situation becomes increasingly complex when snow falls in a region like Kaaba, raising concerns about whether it is a form of salvation or punishment. In today's video, we invite you to join us as we seek answers to these questions. Don't forget to take a moment to subscribe and enable notifications to stay updated with the latest videos on our channel. Recently, a video clip of heavy snowfall near the Grand Mosque in Mecca, known as the MEA's Grand Mosque, has been circulating on various social media platforms. The video, which initially appeared on YouTube and Facebook, depicts pilgrims enjoying this rare and extraordinary phenomenon. The footage shows men and women dressed in pilgrim's attire walking amidst the snowfall surrounding the mosque. People are seen capturing videos and photos using their mobile phones, while others take selfies. Even a policeman is seen carrying an umbrella. Several areas in Saudi Arabia, including Mecca, have experienced rainfall, leading to floods in different parts of the country. The Kaaba, a significant stone structure forming a single room with a marble floor, is situated at the heart of the Holy Mosque in Mecca. Measuring approximately 60 feet in height and length on each side, the Kaaba holds immense religious importance as Islam's holiest building. It serves as the central focal point around which the Holy Mosque is constructed. The four walls of the Kaaba are covered with a black curtain that reaches the ground and is secured with copper rings. The door of the Kaaba is positioned in the southeast wall, about seven feet above the ground. Inside, there are pillars supporting the roof, while the interior is adorned with numerous gold and silver lamps. Inscriptions on the inner walls chronicle the various renovations carried out on the Kaaba. According to the Holy Quran, the Kaaba was established by Abraham and his son Ishmael, who together constructed this sacred shrine dedicated to the worship of the one true God. Five times a day, over a billion Muslims worldwide turn towards the direction of the Kaaba to offer their prayers to the one true God. Additionally, during the annual pilgrimage, known as the Hajj, around two million pilgrims converge on the holy city of Mecca. In the eastern corner of the Kaaba lies the Black Stone, which predates the advent of Islam. Encased in gold, the Black Stone holds a significant place within the Kaaba. During the pilgrimage, known as the Hajj, pilgrims will kiss or touch the Black Stone, not because the stone itself is considered holy, but because it was kissed by the Prophet Muhammad. It can be said that the Kaaba is one of the most sacred places for Muslims. Unfortunately, alongside the snowfall, Mecca has been afflicted by various calamities in recent days, including floods, storms, earthquakes, and lightning. The heavy rainfall in Saudi Arabia, particularly in Mecca, has resulted in widespread flooding, leading to discussions on the effects of global climate change. The necessity for emergency planning and the maintenance of infrastructure is crucial, as it is essential to address both natural and human causes of floods and heavy rainfall in Saudi Arabia. These events have led to the flooding of Mecca, disrupting worship activities, displacing pilgrims, and sparking discussions on preventing future occurrences due to the country's diverse weather patterns. Unusual weather patterns in Mecca, including sandstorms, heavy rainfall, and rare snowfall in northwestern Saudi Arabia, have raised concerns about the impact of global climate change. The heavy rainfall in Mecca has caused devastating flooding and damage due to overwhelmed drainage systems and altered natural water channels. This flooding has halted prayers at the mosque for maintenance, resulting in severe consequences for both humans and animals. The long-term implications of flooding in Mecca require authorities to study the causes and prioritize safety in Saudi Arabia. In addition to the floods, there have been reports of a large number of locusts attacking Mecca while Muslims were praying in the holy city. This sudden occurrence has shocked people and raised questions about its significance. Some interpret these events as signs of the end times, indicating a warning from God to be prepared. Snow holds various symbolic meanings in different religious and cultural contexts. In the Bible, snow is associated with purity, forgiveness, and refreshment. Christians view snow as a positive omen and a sign of positive changes. 
Some individuals offer a fresh, biblical perspective on the unusual weather in Arab Saudi, citing the prophet Isaiah's descriptions of deserts blooming and rivers flowing in the end times. They see the abnormal presence of snow in typically arid areas as a fulfillment of these prophecies. The effects of global warming and climate change are believed to contribute to the unusual weather patterns in Saudi Arabia. The country's desert climate has become hotter over the years, and the occurrence of heavy rain and snow is seen as an anomaly. However, Muslims view these phenomena through a religious lens, guided by the teachings of the Quran and the Prophet Muhammad's Sunnah. According to Islamic beliefs, signs of the approaching doomsday include the Arab land becoming green with plants and rivers. This perspective leads Muslims to interpret these phenomena as potential indications of the end times drawing closer. In the above hadith of the Prophet, there is one word that deserves attention, and that is the word return. This word suggests that in the past, the Arab land was fertile, contrary to its current barren state. When we consider the connection with climate change in southern Saudi Arabia, where there is high rainfall and snowfall, there is a possibility that Saudi Arabia may become fertile land. The words of the Prophet in the Hadith are also likely to manifest in the coming years. As Muslims, it is important for us to view this phenomenon through the lens of faith, to be self-aware, and to continue remembering Allah. We do not know when the end of the world will come, and Allah says in the following verse of the Quran, And do you know that perhaps the day of judgment is near? Quran, Surah Al-Azab 33-63 According to the Quran, disasters are related to piety. Allah has stated that the faith and righteousness of the inhabitants of a region are directly proportional to the blessings that Allah will bestow upon them. On the other hand, those who deny His religion will face torment and suffering. As mentioned in Surah Al-Araf, verse 96, If only the people of the cities had believed and feared Allah, we would have opened upon them blessings from the heaven and the earth. But they denied the messengers, so we seized them for what they were earning. Quran, Surah al to araf 7-96 We have no right to judge the inhabitants of the Arab lands and accuse them of denying the word of Allah. However, it is worth noting that even if the country's rulers or officials engage in terrible actions, the immoral and corrupt behavior of citizens can invite God's punishment as a disaster. Therefore, everyone should be concerned about the warning from Allah in the following verse. Then, do those who have planned evil deeds feel secure that Allah will not cause the earth to swallow them or that the punishment will not come upon them from where they do not perceive, or that he may seize them in their most dreadful state? and they will not be able to cause delay, or that he may seize them while they are fleeing. Quran, Surah Al-Araf 7 109 109-101 There are various opinions and interpretations about the end times, the apocalypse, and signs of an impending rapture. In times of tragic world events and the presence of evil, it is common for people to search for signs of the end rather than seeking answers in God's word. While the signs of the end may sound familiar, it is important to focus on the hope that Jesus reveals in verse 13, which states, But the one who endures to the end will be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be proclaimed throughout the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come Matthew 4 13-14. The question is, how do we endure? Endurance does not merely mean surviving until the end and the return of Jesus. A central part of Jesus' message was to bring the kingdom of heaven to earth, and as believers, we continue this mission of bringing heaven's culture to the world. We are not passive bystanders, but active agents in bringing the light of Christ to earth, especially in troubled times. Jesus made it clear that many will be deceived. So staying grounded in God's word and truly knowing the heart of Jesus and his teachings is vital. There is no need to panic because our ultimate hope is found in Christ. It is important to read the gospels and discover who Jesus really is and the grace, hope, and mercy he offers. Engaging in a daily Bible reading plan that focuses on the Gospels can provide a clear understanding of Christ and His teachings. Additionally, obedience is crucial. Each individual has been placed on earth, in this specific time in history, and in their respective roles for a purpose and to serve God's glory and the good of others. God has gifted each person with unique abilities to serve those around them, and the Holy Spirit within them serves as a seal, setting them apart. Apart from kingdom work, which can take place in the church, it can also happen in other settings such as your home, classroom, or workplace. Jesus said, 
Let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Matthew 5 verse 16. Pray and ask God to give you the ability to see how you can be a light to others, right where He has placed you. When Jesus speaks about the end times, He also mentions the preaching of the gospel worldwide. Will you be a light for the gospel? Furthermore, find comfort in the hope that Jesus will return. In the midst of turmoil, our faith serves as a strong anchor because Jesus will come again and make all things new. Philippians 4.7 describes the peace that transcends understanding, which guards our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. This peace is already ours, and we don't have to succumb to chaos and fear. Carry the message of peace and hope wherever you go and to the people you meet. Pray Philippians 4, 6. When you feel anxious about the state of the world, asking God to grant you rest and focus as you fix your mind on Him. As we approach the end times, it is important to be aware of the similarities and differences in the beliefs of different faiths, particularly Islam and Christianity. Jesus is highly regarded in both faiths, although with some variations. Muslims consider Jesus to be God's Messiah, prophet, and righteous servant, while Christians view him as all of the above and more. The belief in Jesus is a common element in both faiths, even though they have different perspectives on his nature. This shared reverence for Jesus can serve as a foundation for dialogue, fostering greater mutual understanding, tolerance, and respect. However, it is essential to recognize and discuss our differences as well, as this is crucial for true understanding. Regarding scriptural authority, there are differences between Muslims and Christians. For Christians, the Bible is considered the word of God, and some acknowledge that it is also the word of man, mediated through human authors. There are varying beliefs among Christians about the inspiration and inerrancy of the Bible. On the other hand, Muslims have the Quran as their authoritative scripture. These differences in scriptural authority are important topics for ongoing dialogue between Christians and Muslims, with the aim of fostering mutual appreciation and understanding. Both Christianity and Islam are followed by a significant portion of the world's population. If these two faiths work together, they have the potential to address many of the challenges our world faces today. This dialogue should continue, leading to a greater level of understanding, tolerance, and mutual respect. The issues discussed here provide a starting point for achieving such mutual appreciation. Thank you for watching. See you in the next updated videos. May God bless you. Amen.